Hi, I'm Nigel Poulton and welcome to this first ever episode of Kubernetes This Month, the show that keeps you up to speed with all the important stuff that's going on in the Kubernetes world. And as the name suggests, we'll be coming at you every month. Now, the show is going to look like this. We'll start each episode with a quick catch-up section. This is where we run through the major announcements. It'll be quick fire, with the aim being to make sure you're at least aware of what's been going on. Then, we'll run a deep dive section, where we'll dive a bit deeper into a couple of the announcements. Then, we'll finish each show with our Kubernetes Guru of the Month section. This is where I'll ask a question, and you guys can get in touch with your answers for a chance to win our monthly prize. So, grab a seat and enjoy this first ever episode of Kubernetes This Month. Okay, starting with our Kubernetes catch-up. April 2019 saw KubeCon come to the sunny shores of Barcelona, and it was a big one. This made it the biggest KubeCon Europe's ever seen, and it gives us an idea of the kind of growth the community's experiencing. We're also hot on the heels of the Kubernetes 1.14 release. So, if you're looking for the latest and greatest, Kubernetes 1.14 is where that's currently at. Though, of course, this is the bleeding edge, and you probably want to give it a chance to settle a bit, certainly before running it in production. And on that point, actually, we've started seeing Kubernetes 1.13 appearing on some of the managed Kubernetes platforms. As an example, Google Kubernetes Engine is letting you run as new as 1.13.6. Back to 1.14 for a second, though. Probably the biggest thing to come with that was the general availability of Windows nodes. So, Windows is obviously hugely important in the cloud-native world, and as of Kubernetes 1.14, Windows servers can now be joined to Kubernetes clusters as worker nodes. An important announcement from KubeCon was the Service Mesh Interface, or SMI if you like your acronyms. Will we finally be getting some stability in the Service Mesh space? More on that in just a minute. A favourite project of mine though, Virtual Kubelet hit the 1.0 milestone, so huge congratulations to everyone behind that, and if you're like me and you dream of nodeless Kubernetes clusters, go check it out, it is exciting stuff. Congratulations as well to the folks behind the Kubernetes extension for Visual Studio Code. This also got a 1.0 release. We've got an alpha release of Helm 3, Google has announced GKE Sandbox, and as the name suggests, this is a feature of the Google Kubernetes engine, and it offers better workload isolation based on the GVisor runtime. Very cool stuff. And finally, for this month's catch-up, DigitalOcean announced general availability of its own hosted Kubernetes service, simply called DigitalOcean Kubernetes. And interestingly, they'll be making Kubernetes 1.14 immediately available, which I like. Okay, time to dig a little bit deeper into some of those announcements in our Deeper Dive section. In this month's Deeper Dive section, we'll pick up on three things. Kubernetes 1.14, the Service Mesh Interface Specification, and Helm 3, and we'll do them in that order. It's fair to say that Kubernetes has a reputation as a melting pot of innovation, and that's great, but innovation Kubernetes style generally means a ton of change. Only, you know what? Kubernetes 1.14 feels different. I was almost disappointed on the cool new features front. Instead, we got what almost feels like a long-term stable release, which, if you know technologies like Ubuntu Linux, every couple of years you get a special release that's tagged as stable, and you can rely on it and build on it for a long time. In no way am I saying Kubernetes 1.14 is a long-term stable. But I am saying it's feeling a lot like we're in a period of stabilization. In fact, a lot of the recent Kubernetes releases have had this stability and maturity feel to them. So less of the crazy new stuff and more of the stability and GA stuff, which is good, especially from an adoption perspective. Like if you're a company looking at maybe deploying Kubernetes and you start seeing lots of stable features and the likes, you're going to be more likely to deploy. So, is Kubernetes entering a phase of stability? Well, I guess only time will tell, but it certainly feels like the relentless pace of innovation is starting to be matched by a phase of relentless stabilization. I like that. But as well as recent Kubernetes releases, there was a similar feel to KubeCon in Barcelona. I mean, I personally felt a little bit let down on the announcement fronts, 
only to be reminded though by the community that technologies like Kubernetes are supposed to be boring. And they're right, of course. Boring being another way of saying stable and reliable. Anyway, Kubernetes 1.14 gave us general availability of Windows nodes. But aside from that, it felt a lot like stability, stability, stability. Sticking with the stability theme, service meshes. Yeah, there's two things I bet you never thought you'd hear in the same sentence. Well, we're not there yet, but service meshes may be in the process of taking a giant step in the direction of stability. So I think a lot of us probably recognize that service mesh technologies are promising a lot and they're going to be key as we move towards cloud native architectures. I mean, not only are they solving a bunch of the application networking challenges we already have, they're opening up a whole new world of things that maybe we never even thought of. And that's great and all, but the landscape is confusing. Like, which service mesh do I choose? Does it need to be a CNCF project? Does it need to use Envoy? There's just too many decisions. And then when you've finally decided, the learning curve is steep, like practically vertical, none of which is good. Anyway, at a keynote at KubeCon in Barcelona, Gabe Monroy from Microsoft announced the service mesh interface. The short and skinny, we might be just about to get some standards in the service mesh space. Now, if you're not playing with a service mesh at the moment, but you know your Kubernetes, think of SMI as being like the CRI, the CNI, or the CSI, yeah? Just for service meshes. So with that, I mean a standardized API that mesh providers interface with, making it easier for users to implement meshes and easier to swap them in and out, all of which is good and should drive adoption. Now, it's early days, of course, but we've already got our first reference implementations from Solo.io with their super glue and their service mesh hub products. So go check out those guys and also check out SMI-spec.io for the actual spec and some basic info. And finally, for our deep dive section, Helm 3, the de facto Kubernetes package manager. Currently, those of us using Helm will be using Helm 2 but the project in the process of overhauling its internals, and all of that's happening under the umbrella of Helm 3, which, as we said, got an alpha release. So an important milestone, and congratulations to everyone involved. Alpha releases tend to be a bit hairy, and they're definitely not for production. So if you're a potential user, and you're wondering, should you go with Helm 2 or jump straight to Helm 3? Right now, the advice is stick with Helm 2. Then, as and when Helm 3 matures, make the switch then and your existing Helm charts and the likes from Helm 2 should work nicely with Helm 3. And on that note, let's move on to our first ever Kubernetes Guru of the Month segment. Now, with this being the inaugural episode of the show, there's no winner from last month, but it does mean you get the chance of being the first ever Kubernetes Guru of the Month. So here we go. We've posted a question on our Facebook page here, and if you think you know the answer, get typing. And you know what? Wrong answers are allowed. We will not be publicly shaming you, so get involved. And with that, I'm Nigel Poulton, and I'll see you again next month, same cube time, same cube place. That's so cheesy. And with that, I'm Nigel Poulton, and I'll see you again next month, same cube time, same cube place.